camera pans from left to right, and if you look carefully, it's you know, Mary Jane, it's for, uh, Dr. Strange and Clea, it's, I don't know if there's another one, but basically I, you see them in their winter outfits, but you go, if you look at them, it's like there's enough things there you can recognize, but that's the kind of thing you add it, and if you knew it, you spot it. If you did, hmm. it didn't hurt the story at all. So that was my own criteria of how I added cameos that you guys would enjoy. Let's see. Uh, before I get, oh, this is this this one. Oh, oh, oh geez, that's right. Um, that that image on the left was my bucket list. In 60 years, I had never been published by Marvel Comics, and after I think last year they called me up because they I had made to be a consultant on the 97 series. They called me and said, "Do you want to do a variant cover?" Hmm. I went. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So they, I asked him, what, what do you want me to draw? I said, draw the characters in their original outfit from, from the show. So I got a chance to draw that. Uh, since Rick Holbrook inked it, they got one of their professional colorists to do it. And boom, I finally got published by Marvel after 60 years. <laughs> Then, set, then they asked me to do a second one for Wolverine. So I, I did the sequence where Wolverine's fighting the Sentinels in the cave. You know, that's, and that's where that one came from. But the first one, that was the one I said, yes, I made it. I'm an artist. <laughs> 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 okay, it's, we got 15 minutes left. I'm going to just show this one. I had lots of them, but I only have one sequence. I have a sequence here, if it lets me do it. Um, I had a... Uh, the script had Wolverine uh, fighting the evil Xavier, and it was storyboarded not good, and I didn't like the idea of Wolverine cutting the third rail because it would kill him. Um, so I came up with this entire sequence in my head, and it was writing itself. I had no idea where I was going to go with it. And I'm, I'm drawing on posters and scribbling stuff and handing it off to Mark over here. Clean this up, man. I gotta, I gotta get this thing done because I, I was on a deadline, and it just literally wrote itself. And Mark inked it all like a comic book, and it came together. And so, let me show it to you right now if I can get this thing to work. Where's the? Uh, there it is. There it is. Start. Man. So I want to show you something that I created from nothing that was in the show.
I guess I was going to open up for Q and A for people who have questions. Up oh, this one, Rogue. Yeah. Um. So hmm. a, a lot of two different um uh, live action movies have been made and failed really bad at telling the story of the Dark Phoenix. Yes. Why is it that you like what what was the magic? Why is it that you guys like I feel like the only successful iteration of that story in like film and television has been the animated series? What well what, what was the secret? I think one of the things we had going for us, like when we did the Phoenix and Dark Phoenix, when you added up, we had nine and a half hours to tell that story. And so we had the writers had time to do, you know, a five episode arc of showing Gene getting the power and showing the good feelings, and then we have another four to show the corruption of Gene for that. And so I think, like I said, one of the problems with the live action is that they tried to do one up one movie, and okay, she's, she's bad, and she was good. You know, you have no point of reference. Whereas these guys had a chance to take the story, build on the character, showing her, showing how good she is and how she's your struggle with power, and then the corruption that happens afterwards. So I think that's one of the reasons uh, it worked well, you know, and the skill of these writers, you know, they were able to take, adapt the stories that were like, I don't know, about 10 issues, and compress it down to like 20 minute uh, uh, episode shows that were, and we just, we build on it, and we had time to make things work. I think also, because we actually did the story, where the, the movie adaptations have been only tangentially related to the actual source material, where we actually <coughs> tried to maintain as much fidelity as we could. <coughs> I mean, yes, we had. To, I know I had to make changes. We had a different cast, different ending, but wherever I could bring the comic book material into the script, I went right for it. And it is a lot of backstory. When I tell my class setting up that last episode, giving them all that backstory takes almost as long as showing the episode. So trying to put that into a movie, I, I was I was hoping that the movies would, you know, do the Phoenix as one entire feature length film and yeah. Dark Phoenix as the part two. So they should. Not the way they went. I don't think the movies had anywhere near the scope or the drama or and some of the changes they made to some of the characters, the, the way they treated Rogue, since they didn't have the Miss Marvel backstory, was, I thought, a pale imitation of the Rogue that we had in the series. Yeah, yeah. I think that you guys also just, like, write better women and respect, mm -hmm. like, you guys allow women to actually be powerful, whereas I feel like a lot of times, in a lot of movies, unfortunately, they have not allowed women to, like, truly like take up the scene and like be as powerful as they actually are. The most powerful characters in the X-Men were the X-Women. Yes! Here's my book, Lady Sherlock, Turtle the Smiling Dead, bitch. Um, <laughs> a very strong female character in 1906, a very chauvinistic age, so I love writing strong female characters because I write what I know. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've been told that this is probably the question of the last question, but um, if you go over to in the inside of the the, the downstairs, <laughs> if you look for pillar B12, like the um, right that's where that's where I got my table set up, and I found a table for these guys that they can sit at, and you can ask them more questions and get hmm. autographs and stuff. So. There's a signing table for you guys. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you guys for attending the show. We're